Statistics show one in four women over the age of 18 have episodes of leaking urine, but most are too embarrassed to talk about it or to seek treatment. So we're here to bring that subject out into the open with our HCA partner, Dr. Megan Sneed from Lee Summit Women's Care. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. I do think that this is a topic that many people think just comes with age. Just, absolutely. Just accept it and move on. Absolutely. And that's not the case. No, it's absolutely not the case. In fact, I'll tell you the biggest thing that I notice is many women never say anything to their doctors about it. In fact, I'll almost get through an entire annual exam with a patient and just happen to mention at the end of the exam, do you leak urine when you cough or sneeze? And the vast majority of those women will say, oh, well, yeah, but just the normal amount for my age and since I've had babies. And I think that we often confuse common for normal. And even though urinary incontinence is very, very common, it's absolutely not normal at any age. And we don't have to just put up with it. Absolutely not. There are treatments for all types of incontinence. Okay, so we'll get to those treatments here in a second. Let's first talk about some of the reasons why, I know there's a whole long list of why's you might, ways or reasons you might have a, a temporary issue with it. Alcohol, overhydration, caffeine, things that probably come and go in your sure. life. But let's talk about these more persistent uh, problems with urinary incontinence. Why why might they come on in our bodies? Well, many women will develop incontinence just as they age. Gaining weight, smoking weakens all of the tissues in our body, mm. and so it will also weaken the pelvic floor and increase the risk of incontinence. The big one is having babies. We all know that vaginal deliveries increases your chance of leaking urine later in life, but what people don't realize is just having those pregnancies, carrying that baby for 40 weeks, can also put uh, pressure on the pelvic floor and can increase your chances of having incontinence later in life, even if you don't have a vaginal delivery, even if you have a C-section. Okay, so now let's talk about treatments and different things that can be done. There's a whole list of things. Sure. Right? Well, Where do there you are begin? different types of incontinence, and the two biggest ones are urgency incontinence, which is that gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, that where you feel like you have to pee really bad and you may or may not actually make it to the bathroom. And that type of incontinence is treated with bladder retraining, some pelvic floor physical therapy, some biofeedback, medications like Detrol, Ditropin, those kind of things help with those kind of, that kind of incontinence. The second really big one is stress incontinence, and that's the leaking urine with coughing, sneezing, running, jumping, laughing, those sorts of things. Okay. Um, and that can be, have, you can have a modest impact or even a moderate impact with pelvic floor physical therapy, Kegel exercises, pelvic floor um, exercises, those sorts of things. But the vast majority of women who have a significant stress component to their incontinence will find that their biggest improvement comes from surgery. And that sounds really scary. but It does. Yeah. You, know, you think, oh, well, it's not bad enough for surgery. But the reality is most most women can get almost a near cure from a 15-minute outpatient procedure that has a very low risk rate and a very high success rate. All right, Dr. Sneed, you make it sound easy, but definitely something we should tackle. Certainly. And not live with. No, very you do not good. have to live with We it. encourage all of you who may be dealing with this or know someone who is, go to our website, kctv5.com. We'll hook you up with HCA and, and more information from Dr. Sneed on this very important topic. Thank you so much. Thank you.